Now, one of my colleagues, Bruce Zenner, who recently retired, said that uh, chemistry is the study of electrons. I'm sure many other people have said it, but that's where I heard it from. And, uh, and that's almost entirely true, but we do need to spend a little bit of time focusing on the nucleus. And uh, in particular, we're gonna be talking about something called the nuclear symbol. And the nuclear symbol is, oh, let me draw a sample for you here. So this is gonna be, this is a nuclear symbol right here. It's going to have a couple parts one of which is going to be the C, which is the chemical symbol for carbon. And here, this number, which is sort of a subscript before it, is going to be the number of protons. And the number of protons is also given the name atomic number. So I'll put comma there because that's another way of referring to it. And then a third, uh, so sometimes you'll see this, uh, is the letter Z. And that's my Z with a little line through it. Um, that's a Z. So the symbol, so uh, number of protons is also called the atomic number, which is also represented by the symbol Z. And up here is the mass number. And the mass number is the sum of the number of protons plus neutrons. So protons plus neutrons. And because the protons plus the neutrons are 99.97% of, of the mass of the atom, that's where the term mass number comes from. And for reasons that I don't understand, this is A is usually the symbol that you'll see for that. Although I, I, rare, I, I have not used A in any of the courses I teach, although I have used Z for the atomic number or the number of protons before. Um, now, uh, the chemical symbols are all on the periodic table. So carbon is right here. You can see the six for the number of protons is right on top there. And, um, and then the numbers on the bottom, well, we've talked a little bit about that as the average molar mass. We're gonna talk more about that coming up as well. Um, but for example, we could do uh, fluorine nine and its nuclear symbol. And it turns out that uh, one of the types of nuclei for fluorine has nine, so all, well, let's step back for a minute. Here's our chemical symbol. All fluorine atoms have nine protons. All carbon atoms have six protons. Fact, true. Now the mass numbers we're gonna start playing with, um, or let's say though that can change, and that's when we talk about isotopes. Um, but one question we can ask is, so for uh, either of these nuclear symbols, rep for these types of atoms, how many neutrons are there? And the way you do that is, if this is neutrons plus protons, and this is protons, you just subtract. And so this one is going to have six neutrons, and this one's going to have 10 neutrons. And you can see that at least for carbon and fluorine's area of the periodic table, the number of neutrons and protons are actually pretty close. We'll talk more about that. Now what I want you to do is, I want you to write the nuclear symbol for each of these types of atoms in your notes. Um, and please, uh, and I will be checking that. Now we'll continue our focus on the nucleus by talking about isotopes. Many elements have more than one stable isotope and some unstable or radioactive isotopes. And what I'm showing here are for carbon, the three nuclear symbols for the uh, isotopes of carbon. And like we, we can go through and P is protons, neutrons. Uh, I will tell you which ones are stable or radioactive. 
and then we'll talk about the percent present as well. And um, let's see, so, so six, all right, they're all carbon, so they all have six protons. Any carbon atom in the universe is defined by the fact that it has six protons. Now here, if we look at the difference, we have six neutrons, seven neutrons, and eight neutrons. And that's always just subtraction. So uh, now um, stable, we don't know, and I don't know what makes these, these isotopes stable or unstable. I have to look this up myself. You can look it up. You will always be told uh, which isotopes are especially in general chemistry at least you have to go to many more layers of the onion to start figuring that stuff out but uh, yes this is stable and stable just means not radioactive if you have carbon um, here this uh, isotope of carbon and I should tell you the pronunciation for these as well I apologize so uh, this is called carbon 12 and you would write it carbon-12 if you're writing about it or speaking about it. This is carbon-13. And you don't have to put them anywhere. I'm just putting them around them. It's not like a superscript or anything. And this is carbon-14. Okay, that's the pronunciation of these isotopes. Um, all right, so carbon-12 is stable. It exists. Carbon-13, yes, also stable. Uh, no, this one's radioactive. And again, tests have shown this. We are accepting this. Um, and uh, radioactive, so it turns out that carbon-14, well, let's do the percent present. Percent present is 98.89% uh, for carbon-12, 1.11% for uh, carbon-13, and carbon-14 is approximately one part per trillion. Which is uh, abbreviated 1PPT. And uh, we'll talk more about that as you go through general chemistry as well. Units for um, uh, parts like this. But let's suffice it to say... It is, so on the sig figs here, these add up to 100%. So that's like 0 0.00000001 or something out there. So it exists, but there's not very much, and it doesn't affect the math that we're going to do coming up. All right, so, so these are the two stable isotopes of carbon, carbon-12 and carbon-13. And then the next question here says, how do you know how many stable and radioactive isotopes an element has? The answer to that is you don't. You have to be told them. And questions that you're going to see on the homework are going to be like this. How many protons does carbon-12 have? How many neutrons does it have? Um, how many protons does uranium-92 have? Or, I mean, I could ask you any question about protons. Uh, nickel. How many protons does nickel have? And you don't even need the nuclear symbol for that. It's the number above each of the elements on the periodic table, or 28 for nickel. All right, but it's a use. So, oh, and um, these. T so, well, let's do this. Protons, 92. That's going to be true for any atom of uranium. It defines uranium. Neutrons. Uh, oh, <laughs> I'm going to have to get out my calculator for this one. So 235 minus 92, I get 143. And it's going to be three more, so 146 neutrons. And I just, I wanted to do uranium. Um, uh, well, so no, no, both of these are unstable. Both of these are radioactive. That's another way of saying unstable. Um, percent present, uh, let's see, this one's 99.274. This one's 0 0.720. That adds up to 99.994. Uh, 
there are other radioactive isotopes of uranium that are, again, very uh, small percentages. These are the two that uh, are used for the uranium to make nuclear power when uranium is used. Um, and in fact, they take the 238, and uh, if I remember my nuclear chemistry correctly, they enrich it in the 235 um, to get it to be used for nuclear power. Now, these are radioactive. They have a half-life, which is the time for half of the uranium or any element. So time for half of the radioactive radioactivity to go to go away. So half-life, and I want to get this right here. So uranium-235 is 4.7 times 10 to the 8 years. And uh, uranium-238, 4.5 times 10 to the 9th years. So uranium is been here a long time it's going to be here a long time uh, and be radioactive too um, now carbon 14 on the other hand its half-life is 5700 years uh, carbon 14 is used for carbon dating things based on how much carbon 14 even though there's only a tiny bit we can detect it and tell um, the age of things like the dead or the approximate age, let's say, of things like the Dead Sea Scrolls or things that were approximately 10 to 20,000 years old uh, that were human made, which is pretty cool. And uranium is actually part of the dating of the age of the Earth because it's been here since the beginning. Pretty cool stuff. Uh, generally, second semester general chemistry stuff.